Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add precious metal attributes to your shapes or uh, gemstone uh, attributes to your gems that you bring in. First, I'm going to go and bring in a basic shank, a closed shank in this case. I'll select a half round. And I'm going to bring in a gem. And we'll make it a blue diamond. Okay, now what I want you to be aware of is when you bring in a gemstone or you bring in a shank that's pre-made, right? It's going to come in as a component. Components have pluses and minuses with them. The critical plus to a component is that it has embedded within it the uh, attributes that was given to it when you brought it in. For example, I'm going to Tools Cutters. I'm going to Inquire Stone. I'm going to left click on top here. It's letting me know it's a blue diamond and it's 7.2 millimeters and 1.44 carats total, right? Now, uh, that's good for a quick check on your stone. It's also good for your bill of materials so you can get uh, generate reports. If that is out of the way and you don't need it, and you prefer to look at your, uh, uh, your gems with a more transparent uh, attribute, you have to merge the component. As far as the shank goes to shape, there's, it doesn't matter. This here, you could just merge it by going to the shape toolbar. Underneath the inlay, you'll see a merge command. And when you go to your tools cutters, you want to inquire the metal. It's fine. You can inquire it uh, right away. And also at the same time, it goes to the bill of materials. It's primarily the gemstones that are affected most. The moment I merge the gemstone from a component into a shape, I can no longer go in and inquire the stone. Okay? So I just want you to be aware of that. But you can come in now that it's a shape and add attributes uh, that are transparent. And here we go. Go to the Visualize Toolbar. Next to the texture map, you'll, you'll probably see a checkerboard there. Uh, go underneath and grab the chrome icon. Set your entity filter to shape. In this case, it's the shank, right? I'm going to select it. I'm going to click in here. Now, the ideal scenario is putting a shortcut on your desktop so you don't have to locate the folder with a lot of work. Okay, so I'll just come into the precious metal. And I'll add this, so let's say this 18 karat green. Yeah, I'm going to change that one. <coughs> Make it 14 karat. And OK to command. OK, now, well, uh, you'll notice here there's like a yellow tint to it. I'm going to undo that. And prior to doing it, I'm going to tone this down. I'm going to go to my face attribute. I'm going to come in here and go to custom. And I'm going to knock my saturation down here to, let's say, 100. I'm going to change my shine from dull to shiny and come over here. Okay, now I'll go back to the chrome. Select this, select my color, and you'll see you have your precious metal attribute applied to your shape. Now keep in mind to, uh, to do this once in a while, uh, it's okay, it doesn't bother your eyes too much, but if you're going to model long term, you may not want to do this uh, and look at this precious metal color for hours, okay? So now, same for gemstones. Go to the Chrome, select your gem, go into your file name. I'm going to go back one into the gem colors, and I'll pick a blue sapphire, open it, and OK it. Okay. 
So now it comes in like this. And you'll probably want to add some transparency. Right click on top, go to face attribute. Again, I'm going to kick these up to shiny. And I'm going to make a transparency in the area of 15, 16 in that area. And approve it. And now you have this sapphire color with the transparency. And you have your precious metal attributes to your shapes. Okay, so this is a way to work. But just remember, once this is merged into a shape, you, uh, you, you lost that uh, information, the millimeter size and, and the gem weight and all that. Okay, I hope it's helpful.